Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, Andrew continues teaching from the life-changing Word of God about excellence. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on a subject that I have entitled Excellence. I've got a book out by that title. The subtitle is How to Pursue an Excellent Spirit. And I tell you, I've already said a lot of really powerful things. If you've missed any of this teaching, please go to our website where you can watch all of the programs that you've missed, or you can get this book, or we have CDs and DVDs. But this is, uh, this is really important. I've said a lot of really powerful things that you just can't get everything I've got to say in one 30 minute program. So please put it into its context. But I spent the first two and a half days basically just talking about how that most people are shooting at nothing and hitting it every time. Most people settle for a mediocre or a substandard life. They aren't even looking for an excellent, an outstanding, an exceptional life. And yet when we get born again, we have God Almighty living on the inside of us. And I believe it's a, I know that this terminology may offend people, but I believe it's a sin for us just to do nothing. We've got God living on the inside of us. There's other people that need miracles and we can heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. We can give hope. We can do all kinds of things because of God living on the inside of us. And yet there are many Christians that go through life. And if you were to arrest them for being a Christian, there wouldn't be enough evidence of it in their life to convict them. They they are as sick as everybody else. They're as poor. They're as worried. They're as oppressed. It's just wrong. That is not the way that God made us to be. God wants to promote us, but you get promoted because of a spirit of excellence. Let me read that verse again out of Daniel chapter 6 and in verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above all the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The reason he was preferred above everybody else was because an excellent spirit was in him. Well, that's powerful. Whether you know it or not, an excellent spirit is in you if you've been born again. Man, God is wanting to get out. God is wanting to manifest excellence through you. And when you do, it'll bring you promotion. So we've been talking about this and I made a number of points. There's two main things I've emphasized already. Number one, out of Daniel chapter one, Daniel and his three friends refused to lose their identity in the God of Israel. They were taken captive. They were castrated. They were turned into eunuchs. They tried to get them to violate the Jewish laws about what they ate. They could have been griping, complaining, but instead they held on to their identity and they refused to let go of it. And you've got to do that. You've got to know who you are in Christ and who He is in you. Not your self-righteousness, but your faith righteousness that you got when you were born again. And then the last few days I've been teaching that if you truly understand that Jesus changed you by grace and you didn't earn it, it's all grace gifts and He gives this. And if your identity is truly in Him and you recognize every good thing that's in you came from Him, this automatically leads to humility. And I use Daniel and his friends as an example Daniel, when he came before Nebuchadnezzar, he told Nebuchadnezzar, this isn't because I'm wiser than anybody else. It's not because of some worthiness on my part. It's God that is doing this. God is showing you these things. He gave all of the glory to God. There's a number of times that the Lord said, my glory I will not share with another. And I believe that this is why so many people do not see God promote them because they take the glory. It's selfish. You know, we had a man come and speak for me who is very well known, and he did a good job. (coughs) Excuse me. He did a great job. There was nothing wrong with it. And he ministered to people, and there were people set free through it, but he is self-promoting. And he's asked me a couple of times, if he could come back. And I've never told him he can't come back. I probably will have the guy back, but I'm not prone 
to bring him back because he is self-promoting. And, it, and it's really this same principle that God talks about that he will not share his glory with another. When a person begins to take credit for what God is doing through them, it just is a turnoff to me, and I believe it's a turnoff to God. And somebody might think that this is self-promoting. I don't mean it that way, and you may judge me and misunderstand what I'm saying, but one of the reasons that God is blessing Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College so much is because I'm not out to build my kingdom. You can see this especially in uh, Karis Bible College because in Karis Bible College, we have all of these different instructors. We brought in, uh, some years we've had over a hundred guest speakers that come in. And you know what? I am not jealous of them. I've got some of the people that I've brought in who are now instructors in the school that are students. They tell me often that, oh man, Barry Bennett, or Lawson Purdue, or Arthur Maintess, or they are my favorites now. You used to be my favorite, but, but now these are my favorite. And you know what? That doesn't bother me. I'm glad. I'm the one who asked them to come, so I get some credit for it. But I really believe that us together all of us combining our gifts and talents, we make a much greater impact than any one of us would. I am not trying to get people around me who are, you know, who aren't as good a minister that, and things so that I'll look better. I'm not intimidated by other people. Man, I'm glad that they're coming. And all of them, they aren't intimidated by me. I was telling one of them just yesterday that, you know, if, if uh, I was ministering and if Greg Moore, the director of our Bible college, came up, and said he had a word from God and he wanted to speak, I'd let him have my time. I don't care. I'm not building my kingdom. I'm not ministering so that people can be attracted to me. I'm trying to get the truth out. And there's other people that have little different slants on the truth. It's not that we're uh, ministering contrary things. It's just a different way of looking at it. And by bringing them in, all of us are making a bigger impact on the students. And I'm just thrilled with that. So I, the reason I'm saying that is to say that as long as you don't promote yourself, as long as you don't take the credit for everything, if God can get the glory, He will use you and magnify it. And I believe that that's the reason that Karis Bible College is just exploding. And we are seeing awesome things happen is because we aren't trying to build our kingdom. We're giving God the glory. We're trying to get the truth out to people. And it doesn't matter if the truth comes through me or if the truth comes through somebody else. You know, we are soon to open up an internet television station. And I've asked my friends, I've got 30-something people that I've asked to start broadcasting on this internet station. And man, I'm promoting them. And you know, uh, many of the, well, I probably shouldn't even say this, but anyway, there's a lot of restrictions on, on the s networks and the stations that I'm on because they're afraid that if I promote my materials and products too much, it might take away from them. So there's real strict limitations on what you can say and what you can do. On my network, I'm, I'm removing all of that stuff. I'm only asking on people that I know that they are quality people and that they're gonna do the right thing and I'm gonna promote them and because of it, I can guarantee you God is blessing me. When you start trying to restrict things and make it so that you will prosper and you're insecure and stuff, this just stops the flow of God through people. So anyway, I was talking about that you have to find your identity in Christ. You have to know who you are and be secure in that identity. That leads to humility to where you aren't promoting yourself you aren't taking the credit for something that's from God. And then the next step I want to talk about, and again, I think this is really significant. Most people probably wouldn't put these things in this sequence, but I think it's really good. I encourage you to get the book to listen to this. But you, you find your identity, your security in Christ, not in yourself. You become humble. You give Him all of the credit and the glory for it. And if you do that, that just automatically leads to obedience. These things build one upon another. If your identity is in yourself and in, you, in who you are, well, then that's going to lead to pride instead of humility, and it's going to cause you to compromise when you get into trouble because if it's all about you and if it's all about promoting you, then I can guarantee you, you are going to suffer if you really stand up and do what God tells you to do. 
Some people may disagree with that, but 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 says, Yea, all those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you aren't suffering persecution, it's because you aren't living a godly life. If you stand up for godly things, if you go against this world and swim upstream, there's going to be resistance. If you never bump into the devil, it's because you and the devil are going in the same direction. So you know what? You're going to have to... If you don't compromise, it's going to be because you are secure in Christ. You are not promoting yourself, and that will allow you to obey God regardless of the cost. But if you are insecure and it's all about you and you are promoting yourself, you aren't humbling yourself, but you want to build your kingdom instead of God's kingdom, then I can guarantee you when somebody criticizes you, when they pass a law that comes out against your religious beliefs, you'll, you'll fold like a $2 suitcase because it was all about you. It was promoting yourself. But when you find your security, your identity in Christ, you are humble. It's all about Him and not about yourself. It just leads to you obey Christ. You know, if, you str if you're struggling with obeying the Lord, I'm saying this in love. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, but you aren't really surrendered to the Lord. You aren't truly resting in Him. You, you don't recognize that everything good in your life comes from Him, and you're afraid that if you stand up for Him and follow Him, it's going to cost you something, and I just don't relate to that. You know, I had an experience with the Lord March the 23rd, 1968, and the Lord showed me I was a religious Pharisee. I was a hypocrite. I was trusting in my goodness. I'd been taught that to do good, you, I mean, to get good, you had to do good and that you had to perform and earn it. And so I was doing all of the right things, but my faith was in myself. And God just showed up and showed me I was a religious hypocrite. Even though I might have been living better than somebody else compared to another person, I had sinned and come short of the glory of God, which is Jesus. I, I'd still sinned. And man, he showed me that that self-righteousness I was in was the worst sin of all. And I repented. And anyway, when I did that, I ran up a white flag and I repented of everything I had or ever would do. Now again, I didn't understand everything, but I mean, I, I gave everything I had to the Lord. I made an unconditional, absolute surrender and since that time, I haven't done everything right. I'm not saying that I've never made a mistake and that I hadn't got into selfishness and promoting myself, but I'm saying it's never been my desire. And when I do it, it's because of the weakness of my flesh. And the moment I see that I'm getting out of Christ and I'm back into myself and promoting myself, I repent in sackcloth and ashes and I get back on track. I haven't gone perfectly. I've gone more like this, but nonetheless, I've been heading in this direction. And because of that, I can truthfully say right now that if God was to tell me to do anything, whether it was to my benefit or not, whether it looked like the, it was good for me or not, if, it, if I, you could convince me that it was God, I'd do it. And some people say, well, what if it cost you something? It doesn't matter. There's only one God, and I am not Him. And if you could convince me that God was telling me to do something, I would do it, even if it looked like it was to my detriment. And I know some people think, well, that's easy for you to say, but you don't know what you do. I've been in situations like that. One of the very first things the Lord spoke to me after this experience I told you about, He told me to quit school, which cost me my student deferment. I got drafted and sent to Vietnam. I mean, it could have killed me, and yet I knew what the consequences were, but this is what God told me to do. I lost $350 a month from the government when I quit school. I got criticized and kicked out of a church, and people told me I couldn't be a Christian and say that God told me to quit school, which meant I'd be drafted and go to Vietnam. And I, I got a lot of flack over it, and I still did it. And that was an, as an 18-year-old. I did that. And since that time, I remember when I was in Childress, Texas, for the first time in my life, we were prospering enough that we were eating on a regular basis. We had about 50 or 60 people coming to church. I saw a light at the end of the tunnel, and it wasn't a train. It was the end of the tunnel. It looked like we were going to live and not die. 
And then God told me to move to Pritchett, Colorado, a town of 144 people with 10 people in the church. It looked like I was moving backwards instead of forwards. There was no way that Pritchett was a stepping stone to anything. I mean, Pritchett was a dead end. It was a preacher's graveyard. And yet, once I knew that that's what God told me to do, I gave up everything and went there. And on and on I could go. I'm not saying I've done everything perfectly, but I'm saying I know that this is true. If the... You know, uh, a friend of mine, Happy Caldwell, who's just a great, great man, he's pastored a church in Little Rock, Arkansas for... I'm not even sure the length of time, but I know it's over 20 years. I think it's over 30 years. And yet... Uh, the Lord told him it was time to turn the church over to somebody younger, and Happy is now taking his Victory Television Network, and he's beginning to make that go nationwide. And God's given him a new assignment, and he gave up a church that he had pastored for somewhere around 30 years, millions of dollars of assets, and he just turned it over and walked away because God told him to do it. And he was preaching at a conference that I was at, and he was talking about how that a lot of us are getting older and we need to turn our ministries over to younger people. And he was challenging people to do it when they were at the top of their game instead of waiting until they begin to wane and the church suffers and stuff. And he encouraged people. And so he asked people to sit there and consider, would you be willing to just totally walk away from your ministry, turn everything, assets, everything that you've built for decades over to somebody else if this was God's instruction? And so as a member of the congregation and I was listening to him, I considered it and I asked the Lord, would I be willing to do this? And it didn't take me but five seconds. And I said, absolutely. If, that, if you could convince me that God wanted me to move to Africa and live in a grass hut and minister to some of these people out in the Karamoji region where I've been, if you could convince me that that was God's will, I'd walk away from everything I've got. And the reason I, I know some people think, oh, you cannot do that. How could you do that? I'm saying this in love, but if you don't agree with the point that I'm making right here, then your identity is not in Christ. Your identity is in yourself and in all of your personal assets, not in who you are. Paul said it this way. He says, I count everything that I had gained, all of these things, but dung compared to knowing Christ. Once you get your identity in Christ like that and you know Him, then the next... It's just easy to be humble because you recognize that every good thing in you, that what you have in Christ so far outweighs anything that you could do on your own, that, man, you just submit yourself to Him, you're humble, and it leads directly into obedience because your life is in Him. It's not your life anymore. You've turned it over to Him, and you don't sit there, and you don't just make these decisions. To me, I can't relate to a person who says, God told me to do this, but... And then they have reasons that it's going to be difficult for them. And they sit there and debate whether or not they will do what God told them to do. I can't relate to that. I don't want to relate to that. Now, I might... If something just looked like it was going to be really detrimental to me, I might sit there and make sure, God, am, is this really you that I'm listening to? But if you could convince me that it's God, I guarantee you, I'm going to do it. God Almighty has a universe to run. He's got millions, billions of people crying out to Him every day. And if He takes the time to speak personally to you, God Almighty speaks directly to you, and then you debate whether or not you will do it, man, I don't even understand that. You know, I had a man come to me one time from Chicago, and he came into my office and he says, God told me to come to Karis Bible College, but... And then he told me about he was in line to inherit the family business, and when he told his parents that he was going to come to Bible College, they'd never heard of me, so they went to their pastor and they asked him, and he said, oh, that's a cult. Don't have anything to do with that. And so they totally said no. And they said, if you go out there to Colorado, we will disinherit you. You will not get the family business. Not only would he not get the business, but he'd lose his job. He was working for his parents. He was engaged to a girl who didn't want him to come out to Colorado. And she said, if you go out there, I'll break off the engagement. 
And so he started by saying, God told me to come, but, and then he told me all of these things that were negatives that were going to happen if he came. And after he spent 20 or 30 minutes explaining this to me, he says, so what do you think? And I said, you lost me the moment that you said, God told you. If God told you, you just do it. And he says, but what about this? And I said, what about it? If God tells you to do it, if it hair lips every devil in hell, if you lose your inheritance, if you lose your fiance, if it costs you money, it doesn't matter if G God is God. And if you are sure that God told you to do it, you just do what God told you to do regardless of what the consequences are. Man, that's the way I live my life. And you know, it makes life really, really simple. Really simple. I don't have to sit there and anticipate and deal with all of these potential problems. I've only got one thing to do, and that's discern. Is this God, or is it the devil, or is it me? Those are the only three options. Is God the one who told me to do this? Was it the devil that deceived me into thinking this is God? Or is this just my own lust? And I, I'm not going to take time to teach on this right now, but I've got an entire series on how to find, follow, and fulfill God's will that will help you to discern. But once you discern that something is God speaking to you, and once you're convinced of that, then there's just no option. It makes life so simple. I just do what God tells me to do. And somebody says, but you could fail. Well, well let me fail. I don't believe I'm going to fail. I'm going to bring this out about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They basically said, you know, that, that we believe our God is able to deliver us, but even if He doesn't, even if we fail, we're going to obey God. These are the points that I'm getting to. I'm going to have to wait until my program tomorrow to get into that third chapter of the book of Daniel. But this, once you are committed to who you are in Christ, you find your identity, your security, your worth, your value in Christ and not in your own performance. That leads to humility. You know that every good thing in you is Him, and so you give Him all of the glory instead of you operating in pride, and that just automatically leads into obedience because He's God and you aren't. And so you just submit to Him. And you don't have to sit there and deal with what might happen if I do this. So many people worry about things that never happen. They never come to pass. And yet you're worried about it. You know what? I just do what's right. I do what God tells me to do, and I let the chips fall where they may. And if it looks like it's going to destroy me, that's not my business. My business is to obey God and to follow God regardless of what the fallout from that might be. And that is just such a simple place to live. Again, most people are tormented over things that never come to pass. You're worried about what might be. Forget all of that stuff. What has God spoken to you? You just obey. Find your security, your identity, your worth, your value in Christ. Humble yourself and quit operating out of yourself and just live in who you are in Christ. And that means that you will obey anything He tells you to do. You have that attitude. That is an excellent attitude, and I guarantee it will cause you to be promoted. I'm out of time again today, but I'm going to continue to teach on this. Listen to our announcer as he advertises this brand new book that I've got entitled Excellence. This will help you. So listen, and then please call or write to get the materials, and join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. Discover the blessings that accompany an excellent spirit when you get Andrew's teaching titled Excellence. I'd like to encourage you to get my newest book, Excellence. The subtitle is How to Pursue an Excellent Spirit. And what this is is basically a study of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the book of Daniel. And I tell you, this is powerful. Everybody would like the promotion that they experienced, but they don't want to do what they did in order to get there. But Daniel chapter 6, verse 3 says that Daniel was promoted because he had an excellent spirit. This will help you to accomplish the same thing. Make sure to get your copy of Andrew's brand new book titled Excellence when you contact us today. This series is also available in a CD album or in a DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Excellence is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. 
The third audio teaching in today's series is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this third CD free of charge. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner today through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events. In the month of October, he'll be in London and Walsall, England, and in Gold Coast, Australia. In November, he'll be in Sydney, Australia, and in Louisville and Fort Worth, Texas. And in December, Andrew will be hosting a special holiday production titled The Heart of Christmas at the Sanctuary in Woodland Park. The Heart of Christmas is an unforgettable mix of modern day and biblical stories with heartwarming, familiar seasonal songs and American traditions that represent the true meaning of the season. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. has a significant part and place in the kingdom of God. That's what we're doing here. We're raising up champions. We're raising up people who know who they are in Christ, know who He is in them, know what He's called them to do, and go in and possess the land and reach a people that Andrew and Jamie can't do by themselves. Karis has shown me an intimacy with God that's not based on fear. My entire perspective on life has changed. I've gotten to where I just refer to it as the Karis experience. That you come in one way and you leave a different way. To get immersed in the Word like that is really what is going to change your heart. It's, it's given me the, the confidence, I guess, to step out in the truths that I've learned. The fellowship along with the teaching is the thing that impacted my life the most. And it was just like being part of a family. It opened my eyes to kind of be like, you're not alone in this journey. If there are others that believe like you, that will also change the world. The ministry training program is designed to help Karis Bible graduates identify and be equipped in their calling in one of our seven distinctive schools and our leadership program. The worship school focuses on mentoring and developing Karis graduates to lead the body of Christ into genuine worship with character and integrity. For more information, visit karisbiblecollege.org. The Lord has blessed us in many, many ways, but I tell you, one of the most exciting things is the praise and worship that we have at our Karis Bible College. It is second to none. 